Hey, Small Stars here. So I think we've all imagined how it would look, the first starship with humans on it approaching Mars after its six-month journey from Earth. But what happens next? Let's explore why the starship won't actually orbit Mars and what it'll take to get there and back. We need to start at the beginning of the journey for this. Every 26 months, the planets align themselves into the perfect position for us to send spacecraft from Earth to Mars. If you want to learn more about the shape of our solar system, check out my video, The Sun Plus Some Debris. During the most recent launch window in July of 2020, humanity sent three spacecraft to Mars, an Emirati orbiter, a Chinese orbiter rover and lander combination, and NASA's Perseverance rover. SpaceX has been developing their own spacecraft designed to bring humans to Mars and back. Their plan is to launch the Starship into orbit around the Earth first, and just doing that will expend most of the Starship's fuel. We'll call their fuel propellant. We call it propellant because what the Starship burns and pushes out of its engines to get from point A to point B is made up of two separate components, liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The liquid methane is technically the fuel, and the liquid oxygen, or LOX for short, is the oxidizer which allows the fuel to burn in the vacuum of space and helps it combust efficiently while it's in the atmosphere. Together, we call this propellant combination methalox. SpaceX chose this unproven new propellant for a number of reasons, but my favorite is that it can be produced by robots on Mars, which is crucial for getting our humans back home. The Starship will have a payload capacity of over 100 metric tons, which is 220,000 pounds. Payload means humans, cargo, beds, breathable air, food, electronics, water, etc. But that's nothing compared to how much propellant will be on board. The Starship will hold 12 times as much propellant, which is 1,200 tons, or 2.6 million pounds of methane and oxygen. If you're new to spaceflight, get used to this type of payload-to-propellant ratio, because most rockets consist of a mass of only 5% payload and 95% propellant systems and engines. For the Apollo program, check out how much propellant it took to get such a small amount of payload to the moon. The Starship will actually use most of its 1,200 tons of propellant to get into orbit. I'm talking about just the Starship here. After the Super Heavy booster lifts the Starship into space and pushes it well on its way to orbital speed, the Starship itself has to use its own propellant to accelerate even more so that it remains in space and doesn't fall back down to Earth. Once it's in orbit, circling the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour, or 28,000 kilometers per hour, tanker starships will be launched, get into orbit themselves, and rendezvous with the manned starship for a propellant transfer operation. Let me pack all this up into one sentence. The way the starship system works to send such large quantities of mass away from the Earth is to use almost all of its propellant just to get into orbit, and then have its propellant replenished by other spacecraft that meet up with it in space. This will take multiple refuelings to get the starships all filled up. In the past, we've had space stations get refueled on orbit, as well as some small demonstration missions. But this will be the first launch system of its kind, relying on a refueling in space architecture for all but the closest destination orbits. Once a starship has been topped off, it will be ready to depart on its journey across our solar system. Departing from Earth involves firing the engines, and you guessed it, once again, using up most of the Starship's propellant. Not only that, the propellant gets burned up very quickly. To push our humans and the rest of their 100 tons of payload onto their six-month journey to Mars, the engine burn will last roughly nine minutes. That nine-minute trans-Mars injection burn will use somewhere around 970 metric tons of propellant, which is about 80% of the Starship's propellant capacity. A large portion of the 230 tons of remaining propellant will be reserved for landing. The rocket equation kind of hurts, right? And once that nine minutes is up, the Starship just floats towards Mars for six whole months. Just like the Perseverance rover, Curiosity rover, and all the other spacecraft we've sent to Mars in the past, the Starship will spend its six-month journey orbiting the Sun on a path that converges with Mars's orbit. 
Check out my How Soon Will SpaceX Send Humans to Mars video to learn more about the upcoming launch windows. And if you like this content, let YouTube know by subscribing to the channel. If you're confused about anything we've gone over so far, don't be shy to ask us in the comments. There are no dumb questions here, and the whole purpose of this channel is to help people understand and get excited about space exploration. Now let's get into the logistics and procedures for arrival at our closest, most neighborly planet. It's very intuitive to imagine the starships orbiting Mars when they get there. I mean, they orbited Earth before leaving home. Wouldn't they just do the same procedure in reverse to land on Mars? Well, they actually won't orbit Mars at all. They won't even circle the planet a single time. And the reason is, you guessed it, they're basically out of propellant. Orbiting Mars isn't an option with the current configuration unless they reduce the payload by many, many tons. The more of payload you have that you want to change the velocity of, the more propellant you need. And getting into orbit around Mars is changing the velocity and not just going flying right past the planet. The good news is the starships won't need to orbit Mars upon arrival. Instead, they'll enter Mars' atmosphere right away and use atmospheric drag to change their velocity much more efficiently than an engine burn would. Using tiny spurts of propellant, the starships will aim just right so they enter Mars' atmosphere at the right location and trajectory. This is where the famous belly flop maneuver Elon Musk keeps talking about comes into play. Yes, this giant, building-sized spaceship will fall through the atmosphere like a skydiver. The starships will perform pretty much the same maneuver on Earth as well for SpaceX's planned Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation. The big difference with landing on Mars is that Mars' atmosphere is only 1% as thick as the Earth's atmosphere. Still, that 1% is enough to slow down the starships for a safe landing. Each starship will have their own header tanks, or tanks within tanks, that hold the propellant reserved only for landing. A big reason why the header tanks are separate is so that they can remain completely full and reliable for landing and won't be susceptible to sloshing problems. Since when the starships leave Earth, they have their super heavy boosters to lift them up into space, landing on Mars will actually be the first time during the whole trip that the sea level engines finally get to fire. This is a SpaceX animation from their old design, sporting only two aerodynamic surfaces, so the final product won't look exactly like this because this shows a more capsule style control. The final version of the starships will be able to steer themselves, even aiming up and down so that they can spend more time flying through the Martian air to slow down enough and land at the right location. When the starships finally reach the landing zone, they'll tuck in their wings, fire their sea level engines, deploy their landing legs, and our humans will touch down gently on the rusty red alien world. Big shout out to Eric X who collaborated with me on making this 4K animation. He's a great 3D artist who posts new renders regularly, and he's a really nice guy too. His Twitter link is in the description, and I look forward to working with him more in the future. Elon Musk himself confirmed that this is pretty much how a landing will look, commenting on the same animation with a different background that it's a pretty accurate simulation. So that's it. There you have it in a short video. How exactly SpaceX will bring humans to Mars. We're done here, right? I'm just kidding. I didn't forget, we need to bring our humans back home. SpaceX has a plan for the return flight as well, but first of all, you know what I'm going to say next, right? We're really out of gas now. Even the header tanks are empty. And secondly, the planets don't align perfectly for our return journey for another 18 months. But that's okay, that leaves a nice year and a half for our brave planet-hopping humans to explore Mars. And during this time, they can ensure that the pre-staged propellant production plants have topped up their rides. When the time comes, the starships will be all filled up with Martian propellant, and they'll use their sea-level engines once again to launch off the surface of Mars. The information I have gets a bit hazy from here on out because SpaceX hasn't talked much about it, but I'm pretty sure the returning starships will make at least one orbit around Mars before departing for home. We do know that there will be no tanker refueling shenanigans because Mars' gravity is much weaker than the Earth's gravity. I'm not sure how much propellant the trans-Earth injection burn will consume, or what the duration will be like this time, but we can be sure that our starships will spend way less propellant departing from Mars than they spent departing from Earth, due to Mars having only 38% of the Earth's gravity force. When the starships eventually return to Earth after a final six-month coast phase, I'm not sure if they'll have enough propellant to get into orbit, and they may or may not have enough propellant left in their header tanks, to enter the atmosphere directly and land, because remember, they needed to use their sea-level engines to launch from the surface of Mars. 
It is possible that SpaceX might enable the capability to share fuel reserves between the different tanks, which will allow the Starships to perform a more direct operation of just entering the Earth's atmosphere and landing. How marvelous would it be to have our solar system travelers land back at the very same spaceport from which they launched out of two and a half years in the past? Regardless of the arrival procedure, this part of the story might not be all celebrations. Even after landing safely back on Earth, we're not out of danger yet because our brave humans have spent multiple years living in environments with gravity forces far lower than the human body is designed to live in. The effects that a lack of gravity can have on human health can be severe, which is the reason why I have so many videos about artificial gravity designs. Artificial gravity or not, I think the journey to Mars will be immeasurably productive for humanity as a whole, and I'm super excited for the future of space exploration. More specifically, I can't wait for us to get some real answers about alien life. On Mars, we'll be trying to figure out if all life works the way that ours does, with RNA and DNA, or if there's something more interesting we can find right in the backyard of our solar system. Like and subscribe for more content like this, and don't hesitate to leave a comment if new thoughts crossed your mind while watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of the Small Stars Patreon community. If you want to help out and become a patron, there's a link in the description. If you want to provide some non-financial support, sharing this video on other platforms goes a long way. Open your mind and reach for the stars.